No offense to The Sims 4, but what is actually happening right now? The Sims 4 was officially released on the 2nd of September in 2014, almost eight years ago. Over that time, there has been a lot of controversy and disappointments about things that most of us either don't know about or have forgotten about. For example, did you know that The Sims franchise has always supposed to have lore and a timeline? The Sims 2 was a revolutionary game for this. Every household in the game has some secret or mystery or dramatic plot line. Every time you step into the game, you feel like you're stepping into an episode of Desperate Housewives. Like, do you remember how Bella Goff was abducted by aliens under suspicious circumstances? Or how all of the Sims were just absolute animals woohooing with each other left, right and centre? Granted, The Sims 3 didn't give us any storylines, but at least it kept straight with the timeline of events and history that span across the Sims series. Not only did The Sims 4 completely repudiate the idea of lore and stories, they completely disregarded the much-loved timeline by fans in favour of a standalone timeline. And to rub even more salt into the wound, Max has decided to market this as some kind of creative play experience. This is a bold step forward for our Sims as they come to life like never before. Make your own timeline, make your own weird, crazy stories. Because that's right, I am a five-year-old and I get excited about making up fantasy stories in my mind and pretending they are real when they are clearly not. Well done, Maxis, for understanding your customer needs so well. The worst thing is they actually put fake stories in The Sims 4. When you click on any pre-made townie household, they have a fake story written in their bio. Like, it's literally just fake. The most recent pack My Wedding Stories came with a world with two households. Even though it's a very small world, the households don't really know each other because nobody knows each other in The Sims 4. Johnny Zest doesn't even know his own family. That's right, eight years on and they still haven't bothered to add any real storylines in the game. So I think it's safe to say that lore isn't coming back anytime soon. Capitalism, also known as Moschino stuff and Journey to Batu. The Sims has always had product placements in the series. The earliest I can remember is The Sims 2 H&M fashion stuff and The Sims 2 Ikea stuff. Although granted, I did really enjoy these packs at the time. Not all brand collaborations have to be bad. I actually loved having H&M fashion and Ikea furniture because they're both extremely relatable brands. Most people have bought something from either of these brands or shops at least once and that's because they are affordable and relatable. The Sims 4 unfortunately took the whole product placement thing just a little bit too far. First up we may as well mention Moschino stuff. Who on earth owns any items from Moschino? The Sims 4 Moschino stuff came with a fashion photographer Korea and some Cassonville buy. The cast by the way is is absolutely terrible. It doesn't even look fashionable despite coming from a fashion brand. Like what the hell is this top? Especially with the matching skirt. And of course we cannot forget about the cursed pink mosquito heels. The swimsuit uses the old plum bob, not the new one. This dress is literally traumatizing. This skirt is traumatizing. This top, okay, it makes me rage that this top says mosquito in the Latin alphabet. Why is it not in Simlish? Because this is The Sims. It doesn't make any sense. And the bloody clown thingy, I, whatever this is, a sweater, I don't know what it is. It looks like a JPEG image made in paint. It literally looks terrible. The men's stuff is literally just as bad. What the hell is this? What on earth is this? And even though this is a pack about fashion, it actually came with more build buy than fashion. Some of the build buy is actually all right. It's quite modern stuff. But then like, this is not a build buy pack. This is a fashion pack. So why do we have all this build buy? Of course, we can't make a video ranting about The Sims 4 without bringing up Journey to Batu, the infamous pack that literally nobody asked for. The Sims 4 Star Wars pack features your sim going to a Disneyland Star Wars themed place and doing really patronizing basic tasks like click here, speak to this person, do this. And let's be honest, the pack is basically an advertisement for Disneyland. And the thing that aggravates me so much about this situation is EA's history with Star Wars. The Star Wars Battlefront series was always quite popular until EA released Star Wars Battlefront 2. EA set this game up with a horrendous loot box system which led many players labelling the game as pay to win and severely impacting the release of the game. And to be fair, the fact that EA teamed up with Star Wars again in The Sims 4 Journey to Batu was extremely brave, but unfortunately ultimately failed. And disastrous collaborations doesn't just have to come in the form of packs. Around January 2021 time, The Sims team randomly partnered with MAC Cosmetics. Well even before then, of course, we had the curse and iconic MAC makeup come into The Sims 4. 
including the iconic sperm eyeliner. But this memory is a little bit too traumatizing, so let's focus on the 2021 collaboration. MAC basically just repackaged an older makeup palette and put the Sims logo on it, and bam, that's all it really was. Other than that, the palette literally has no Sims 4 branding. The colors don't represent anything in the Sims. The palette is literally just a normal makeup palette, but with the Sims logo on it. Like, do I need to say any more? If only the Sims scene spent less time on meaningless collabs and more time on what Sims actually want, then maybe we would have some more fan requested features right now, like cars. Because one of the main reasons why The Sims 3 was loved by so many fans is because when it first came out, we had the ability to drive cars literally anywhere. Although we have always had cars in The Sims. In The Sims 2, your Sims could drive to different lots, even though it was an open world. Even The Sims 1 had vehicles. The Sims 4 completely ruined and killed off cars, ruining the prospects of having your Sims ever drive again. And you're probably thinking, Satch, why are you complaining so much about cars? Who cares? And yeah, to be honest, it's not really the absence of cars that bothers me. It's more so the underlying meaning behind it that bothers me. The Sims 4 could have given us so many features that were just normalized in previous games, but they just straight up got rid of them and ruined the game. Like cars, babies that are not literal objects, even toddlers were not in the base game, just as we didn't have swimming pools or ghosts or even dishwashers of all things. Worst of all, I remember the Sims team used to really hype this up whenever these updates came out for The Sims 4, like, look, we are treating you to dishwashers. Isn't this amazing? We are such a good company. We love treating our fans with free updates. Literally shut up. Since we launched last September, we've been making the game bigger and better ever since then, both with free updates, things like basements and ghosts and pools and a dishwasher that actually launched today. You're literally just giving us features that you withheld from the base game originally. It's not an exciting new update. The Sims 4 has definitely ruined the Sims franchise, is that it's just stripped so much that was present in previous Sims titles. And on occasion, they have drip fed us some, let me emphasize on just some stuff that was withheld that was in previous games, but not all stuff. Now setting a dangerously low level of expectations of fans who enjoy Sims games before The Sims 4. Although we did have one addition in The Sims 4 that we didn't have in previous games, and that is a Emotions. Sims could now feel emotions, or at least that's what it was marketed as. Sims don't have emotions, they have a PNG in the bottom left corner of the screen that changes colour sometimes. Your Sims don't actually have emotions or even have any interesting consequences resulting from those emotions. And it's not just emotions, but also other things like traits, aspirations, likes and dislikes. Unfortunately, The Sims 4 only has three trait slots, which doesn't really give you enough opportunity to express your Sims. That's right, The Sims Sims 4 has also ruined the concept of expression and individuality because all of the Sims are the same. Then of course we have the pointless likes and dislikes system. The system was introduced in a patch for the Dream Home Decorator pack as this pack requires you to know what design choices your client likes before designing their homes. But since the release of this pack no other likes and dislikes have been added. We've got colour, music genre, activities and decor but that's it. Okay so I can like a music genre but I can't like a certain type of TV show or movie. I can't like indoors or outdoors? Well, I can. I can like the outdoors, but liking outdoors is not a like. Liking outdoors is actually a lifestyle trait. Aspirations are another feature that's always been present in the Sim series. Although in recent years, it's safe to say Maxis has killed them off. At the start, we got quite a few different aspirations all doing completely different things. In the Sims 4 era, aspirations have almost taken a tutorial role, bringing you through all the different pack features. I actually really like this approach because it gets you to enjoy and experience all the different parts of the packs, especially things that you didn't necessarily know about before. The problem is they just stopped doing it. My Wedding Stories, a pack about weddings, didn't come with an aspiration for a perfect wedding. Dream Home Decorator didn't come with a new career focus aspiration. Is it laziness? Is it forgetfulness? Regardless, you can't just completely randomly stop like that yet still keep the packs the same price because you're getting less content but for the same price. It's just a ripoff. Whims are another thing that they've forgotten about. In fact, they've totally removed them from the game, you actually have to now enable them by clicking show whims. Whims are just random things your sims want to do, like call somebody from the phone, schedule a date, donate to charity. Some of these are based on traits. So this guy has a soulmate aspiration, so he wants to kiss someone, and he has a good trait, which means he wants to donate to charity. And some of them relate to your emotions, so sad, he wants to write in a journal. Although, oh, now he's just changed to happy, because as I said before, emotions in the sims are so pointless and they change so randomly. 
But then sometimes they're so random, like, because he's not a vampire, he wants to search for vampire information on the computer. But why? Could that not have just been an aspiration? In fact, I think it is an aspiration. Yes, use the computers to search for information about vampires. The great thing about these is it builds up your aspiration points. Another feature that's basically been forgotten about, and you can get different things that increase your sim's ability to do things. Like, you can make them read faster, you can make them clean faster, you can make it so they never need to shower again, you can make it so they're always full. Like, there's so many really interesting aspirations. This was always one of the funnest things about The Sims 4, and they've just completely forgotten about it and got rid of it. Whims were a way for your sims to express their wants and desires by asking you to do things. Unfortunately, they have been implemented very badly in The Sims 4. Some people did complain about whims because it came with random things, like search for vampire stuff on a computer or buy a bee box. And yeah, some of these were bad, but instead of just working on it and making the whims feature better, they just abandoned it. And now this whole concept on personalizing your sims is just completely ruined. The Sims 2 had an incredible wants and fear system. Your sims would just want to do certain things and also fear doing certain things. Kind of similar to whims, these also have to build up your aspiration points and just added some variety and character to your game. And just as with the lack of aspirations or traits, again, we're getting no new whims with the future packs despite being priced the same. They're just not adding any ways to progress through your sims' lives. They're just leaving it completely blank and saying, make up your own creative fun story because they can't be bothered to give your sims any character and they can't be bothered to give them any goals in life or any unique traits or things to do or update aspirations to give you something to work towards as a player. It's just leaving the game completely bland. And yeah, if we're talking about everything that The Sims 4 has ruined, we may as well move on to talking about packs. The Sims has always had packs. Originally, these packs were intended to provide additional gameplay. Back when The Sims 1 was released, the internet wasn't really a thing. It's not like now where you can just download updates if you want an update. You had to actually buy a pack. So not only did these packs provide additional gameplay, they also provided some important core updates. Since then, the whole concept of a pack has just gone totally out of hand. Every single Sims game has been cash grabby and unethical from this perspective. The Sims 4 has just taken it way too far. The Sims 4 is the first game in the Sims 4 series to introduce game packs. They're basically just like expansion packs, but with slightly less content. I actually really love the idea of game packs. What's the point of buying an entire expansion pack when you only just want one gameplay element for it? Like we don't need tons of build buy and cast and gameplay. Like sometimes we just want the gameplay. I remember when I was younger, I only wanted The Sims 2 nightlife, not because of the nightlife gameplay, but just because I wanted vampires. I think it's great that in The Sims 4, you can just buy a vampire's game pack as a standalone pack and it makes perfect sense. The problem lies with now the fact that so many gameplay elements are being drawn across so many different packs. Like Dine Out, in previous games, restaurants were just a normalized thing, like you didn't have to buy a particular pack to get them. Or like how weddings in The Sims 4 are so bad they made a special pack to upsell us to make them even better, even though the pack literally made weddings so much worse than they already were. Or how Dream Home Decorator literally comes with no new gameplay despite being a game pack, simply offering more build buy and a career that has a couple of interactions. Right now, EA Maxis are just milking Sims 4 fans who are addicted to buying the DLC. And I know you're all addicted because you keep saying comments in my comment section of my videos like, Sat, I'm so addicted to buying these packs, I just want to own the complete collection even though I don't play with them. Every so often the Sims team unveil a new pack and then you buy it and then you complain about how bad it is but then you buy the next pack that they release. That's right, I am calling you out because you have an addiction to DLC. In the past people used to look forward to packs because they actually added something meaningful, something the players could actually enjoy and spend their time playing. These days, to me, packs just feel like something that they release in order to reach their sales targets for the end of the quarter. Is it because EA threatened Maxis if they don't achieve their sales targets? Is it just because they're money hungry? I honestly do not know, but clearly it is a problem. And I know a lot of you guys say, I'm a hater of The Sims. I get so many comments saying, Satch, you just hate The Sims. Admit that you hate The Sims franchise. You've always hated The Sims games. You just do it for your YouTube channel. And that is not true. I love The Sims. I just hate The Sims 4. It is stripped everything. And that's why I wanted to make this video because The Sims 4 is stripped bare. It's a naked game and it's an ugly game. Everything that we've loved about The Sims has been taken away. Instead, we're just left with this hollow game that doesn't really have anything interesting other than just DLC to upsell us. I don't want to be upsold DLC with brand new features. I want a game that's actually fun at the core. The Sims 4 base game needs to be fun alone. We need to have things back like cars and normal babies and normalize having things like dishwashers without telling us it's a brand new cool feature. I don't hate The Sims. I love The Sims. I just hate The Sims 4. I'm honestly 
terrified about what's gonna happen with The Sims 5 or whatever the next Sims game is gonna be. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but one of the main reasons why The Sims 4 is getting boring for most players is because it lacks challenge. We don't have these aspiration reward points to work towards before, therefore we don't really need to bother doing these aspiration goals. And that's if we even get any new ones because we're not getting any. We don't have to work towards whims anymore and getting the whims points doesn't mean anything anymore. Having a career doesn't mean anything anymore. Having babies doesn't mean anything anymore. Nothing really means anything in The Sims 4. It's just a beautiful set dressing. We all know The Sims team love making The Sims 4 look beautiful, but that's all it is. It's just a beautiful, empty, shallow hole. I have so many videos in more detail about why I hate The Sims 4, such as this one here. So go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.